Okay, so here we have the general mechanism for the formation of dibenzyl acetone. This mechanism falls under an umbrella called the aldol condensations. For that, we will need a species, in our case our acetone, that will have our alpha hydrogens. We have them right here, and we have them right here. The first step of this mechanism is going to be the deprotonation of those alpha hydrogens um, by a hydroxide group. Now, for this reaction to take place in a realistic amount of time, we will need a relatively big amount of our hydroxide anions. So, the way we carry that out in the lab is by having a 3-molar NaOH solution mixed in 4 parts NaOH to 3 parts of ethanol, 3 parts of water. Uh, the water is going to be very important because it's going to be providing protons in a later step, as we will see. Now, after our hydroxide, deprotonates that alpha hydrogen from our acetone, we end up with what we call an enolate group. This is a strong uh, nucleophile, We're actually looking to share that negative charge, which it does in step two when it finds a benzaldehyde. So as you can see, the enolate attacks right here, and the negative charge actually gets displaced to the negative end of that benzaldehyde, simply for stabilizing purposes only. As you can see, we have here that negative charge, uh, this is known as an alkoxide. Um, it has that hydroxide group, but it's missing that proton, so we call it alkoxide. The next step is going to be the deprotonation of water, or the protonation of that alkoxide group. Now we have a compound known as a hydroxide ketone. We have the ketone group right here, the hydroxide group, and we're halfway to making our benzyl acetone, our, or halfway through our aldol condensation. What happens next is pretty much a repeat of step one. Another hydroxide group is going to attack one of our alpha hydrogens that we see right here, forming once again an enolate group. In this case, the name is slightly different because we have the presence of those hydroxide groups, those OH, so we call it a hydroxy enolate. Now that negative charge can't simply move towards the uh, oxygens like it did on step two simply because it's misplaced or, or it's placed one carbon further than, than in the step two. So what happens is that the stabilization is going to go through removing that hydroxide group and then that negative charge, those excess electrons that we have there, are going to move into a pi bond. The pi bond, as you guys know, double bond. And this right here is the entirety of the mechanism of our aldol condensation. One thing about acetone, as we see here, there are two sources of alpha hydrogens. Now, because there are two sources, that means that the attack can happen in any one of these two. And if it can happen, that means that it will happen. So, we, in the experimental procedure, add an excess of benzaldehyde so that the attack can happen twice. We added a little bit over two molecules of benzaldehyde for every one of acetone. So, the entire process, step 1 through 5, is repeated again on this left side of the acetone to form the dibenzyl acetone. Um, this reaction is very spontaneous, and some experimental considerations include um, having our solvent first, then adding the benzaldehyde, and lastly, our acetone. And the reason is very simple. Acetone has alpha hydrogens, but it can also add or, or behave as an electrophile, so it can condense itself, and we don't want that. So in order for us to control that, uh, that tendency, we just add the acetone last, after the benzaldehyde and the solvent is already added to our reaction beaker. And that's it for our aldol condensation.